Hey guys, it's Jose George here. You're watching World of Ninja Studio. Today, we're doing Kata to the Streets. Today, we're going over a family system called Kugi Shininru. And we're doing their technique called Seon, which translates into making your opponent make a sound. Okay? So the technique starts off from something called Kumiuch. So it's a seizing strike. Okay? Hope you guys heard that back home. But what's happening is that I'm not just coming up and I'm grabbing him. This isn't a cordial invite. We're not dancing. What happened is that two warriors just met on the battlefield. We don't have all the weapons we need to to be able to confront this in a longer range fight, but we're still trying to win the battle. So we see each other and we rush in. We have this grab, Kamuch. And preemptively, I want to strike. So if, he, if I see him and I come in faster than him, this helps me take his balance before he can get mine. If we both take each other's balance simultaneously, it means I'm a bad warrior and my timing was off. So what I want to try to do is from here, and I'm doing the technique, I grabbed him first, which gets his balance where I needed to, and I'm going to pull his arm down and push back and take his balance. And I'm going to apply this strike uh, to help with that as well, called Boshikin, or the thumb strike. So what I want to aim for is this pressure point right here, which is connected to one of his lymph nodes. So I got here and I pumped that, and then I let this thumb guide into his clavicle or pushing back towards his trapezoid. Either two of these are very good pressure points, and when he tries to stand back up and push himself into it, he ends up poking it, which then keeps his balance broken. Then, I get ready to go behind him to take him down. It's not a reap. I'm not coming for his leg. What I'm going to do is I took his balance, and I'm going to walk straight through him, which takes his balance, and I twist him over my side, and then I get a lock from this posture here. Then, I disengage. Yeah. So, we're going to go over that again. Starts off with Kamuch. I try to strike before he does so I can get his balance better. I push, I, I pull his arm here, I pump him in the pressure point with the Boshikin. I let that stay into his clavicle. I step through him, not reap, and push down. This takes his balance. Now, in this position here, what you may see is that I often have one knee over his neck, one knee over his ribs. This is in case he grabs my collar and he would try to pull me down. If he pulls me down, I'm just gonna post up and this drives my knee and uh, shin across his neck or his ribs, which is a lot of pressure. And then I tend to put his elbow facing against my pelvis and then I lock it. From this posture here, I can easily come back and break it from there. Disengage and then escape. And move on to the next guy and fight him and take his sword or and do that on the battlefield and keep moving forward. Kugi Shinenru is about taking one guy down and then continuing the fight. It's a battlefield art. Okay? So that version's cool. You gotta get really good at the Boshikin, and some of the ways you gotta do that is just do Boshikin and condense it against your chest. Make sure you're doing it right. Understand that it would be a pop to the Yagasumi, and then slide down. Because again, when you come into the side of it, your opponent's not gonna take that, they're gonna start moving around, and it could slip off very easily. So I do this as the initial pop, slide down into the clavicle, and then push. It's very important to be able to understand your tools and their advantages and disadvantages. Boshikin can slide off very easily off of this pressure point. It's good to move someone, but it's not good to keep it there. So, then the next point that I want to bring up is that we don't have to stick to Boshikin. There's a number of ways to take this balance. So, we're going to go to Kamuch again with a seizing strike grab. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my hand right back. I'm going to do a knife hand, like I'm cupping some water in. Pull it back, throw it into his neck. And then I walk behind him simultaneously to do the same takedown. So, we're going to do that again. He comes in with the grab, I pull back, I hit him in the neck, and I walk behind his leg, take him down. So, I love the knife hand, and one of the reasons I love it is because, let's talk about his balance. From this grab, when I do the Boshikin, it pops him one way, and then I push and pull, which blades his body out, which allows me to step behind. This is very good, his balance is going this way at this point. When I do the knife hand, and I go to strike, it rocks his weight backwards. Now I can still go at an angle forward of 45, topple him down, kick him, and then start fighting other people. I don't have to focus on him, and if we're on the battlefield and there's a lot of armor, it's going to take him a lot longer to get back up. He has an additional 60 plus pounds and fatigue trying to get back up from that position. And in the battlefield, what I would try to do is I'd have my spearman or someone behind me, we're moving in rows, close quarter combat, knock the people down, people behind just end up doing their pokes and moving forward to the battle. So that's one reason for that uh, technique, is to knock him forward. Now, one other thing that you might want to be mindful of is that different warriors may have had the uh, neck guards and different things of like that. 
So from the grab, another alternative hand strike is Soshuken, which is a, a, the grab of the trachea. So they would have a plate here where I couldn't normally grab it, but I could easily let my hand come up underneath and then slide underneath that flat and then grab the trachea. And I'm coming in and grabbing both sides and squeezing. This alone would crush the esophagus and make them have a hard time breathing. They would need uh, the surgery to allow them to breathe through that. But we're in battle, so good luck getting a surgeon to do that ASAP. So I struck to the throat, and that same thing starts pushing him back, and I step behind him and I would take him down. So that's a really cool aspect about it. Now, one other thing about Seon that I really want to focus on for you is from this grab, look at my thigh. My thigh is going to be doing the takedown, not my leg doing a reap. So he comes in. And when I get his balance and he's stepping, it's probably best if you come over from this angle right here, is that I'm chalking into his leg, I come on the other side so you can see it. This leg riding into him and me counterbalancing uh, his weight starts to topple his body. And I wanna go for the second leg when I come in for that reap. But what's gonna happen is that this thigh traps his leg and as he bows and tries to step it, it has to come over, and because I'm twisting him, he's gonna fall down naturally. So that's how Seon works. Now, let's get to the core of Caught Into the Streets. Let's gotta, we gotta bring this down to a modern day attack, and we're gonna deal with a jab cross combination, okay? So, in this instance, we're in a street stance, we've been confronted, we've already squared up, this fight's taking place. I either have to strike and go and get away, my back to the corner, or there's multiple people that I have to worry about. So, let's go over the attack first, being a, a jab cross. If I'm here and he throws that jab, and I, I want to try to knock that out of the way so it's not really a factor, and so that he, get, he can't cage his distance. If I were in a boxing match and I had my gloves up and he threw the jab, he knows that now his cross can come across and hit me in the face. So that's the reason for a jab is to gauge your distance. So he comes in for that jab, I smack it off the line. If he throws a cross just like that, it's not going to reach me. There's no real worry. I can kick him in the groin from that point. Now, if he does the jab, and now he has to step forward for that cross to actually make impact, okay? Very important. So now as that next one comes fine, I slip the punch and I let my right hand circle under and grab to the throat. And that is, I do the same technique that I just showed you where I grab the, the trachea and step behind and do everything else I say on. So one more time, that's jab cross slip, get to the throat. From this posture here, technique is mine. I want to be able to step in a little bit deeper and push and have that control. And then from here, I'm just pushing his hand off of mine so I can get it back up. We can do stripes, I can do a knee to the face while he's on the ground, etc. And then get up out of there. It's a very effective technique. The only thing you just have to be mindful of is your distancing. I stayed away from the jab so he couldn't punch me in the face. And he, I know he's not going to leave it out there. No boxer will. It's one, two. It's very fast. But because I'm causing him to step to be able to reach me, I know that the second punch is coming. So that punch comes in, got that off the way. Even if you pull that arm back in, like very skillfully, if that arm came back in, I still have his throat, I still have his sleeve. Even if I can get the crook of his elbow, I can use this against him, cut through, and take his balance. Yeah. So, that was Seon. Thank you for watching. What would ninjas do? Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let us know if there's something that you would like to see underneath. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you, check it out, and to put it on our video queue. Thank you for watching. Don't worry, got the